Next question is from Janky Garage Jim. Any tips to get a back pump? I have uh, I have this thing that I used to do that um, I if I'm like really wanting to get my back like pumped that works like a charm every time I do this, and that's I'll go do four or five sets <clears throat> of heavy deadlifts. So I like to do this where I'm I'm working either triples or a five by five type of a routine, and then right after I'm done with my deadlifts, I go over to a lat pull down. And I do about four sets of lap pull down. If you go do that uh, and get back to me, I promise you it'll be one of the the most massive back pumps you've ever had in your life. I've I've paired tons of different exercises together and 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 tried them in different orders. Nothing seems to give me uh, as as big of a back pump as doing heavy deadlifts followed by lap pull down right afterwards gives me a massive yeah, pump. You know, the back is a, probably one of the more difficult areas to get a pump for people, but I think it's because they don't connect well. They yeah. don't see the muscle squeezing, mm-hmm. and they do a back exercise, and they end up working, feeling it more in their biceps. Um, anytime you have an issue with a muscle getting a pump, in my experience, it tends to be more of a, an, uh, an issue with connecting yeah. to that muscle. So slow your reps down. Focus on the squeeze. The squeeze is where you'll start to connect. So if you're doing a row, go lighter than you normally would. When you bring the bar to your midsection or the dumbbell up in a row or a cable row, squeeze back and really squeeze those back muscles and hold that squeeze for about three to five seconds and then go to the next rep. That can really help. Uh, Another thing you do is do a a pre-exhaust superset where you do an isolation movement before a compound movement. So one of my favorites is a dumbbell pullover to a pull up or a pull down. And I do that one after another. So I go, I go pull over, I do my reps, I just go straight to the pull down or the pull up, and then I rest. That's a, a great way to start to feel those muscles connect and, and get that pump. Yeah, a lot of times going back to your connection point, uh, I would find with my clients too that wouldn't be able to feel it in their back. It is pretty tricky, especially if you don't have good shoulder mobility and uh, connectivity there even to the shoulder blade. And so uh, for me to to go through some like scapular circles and really start to train, uh, you know, them how to to set, you know, their posture correctly in order to even allow for, you know, your lats to, or your rhomboids to get more involved uh, in each one of those uh, movements is, is crucial. And, you know, to go into something like a lat pull down where I'm now driving my chest up, I have to be able to have like a nice expansive open chest uh, for me even to have the opportunity of feeling it in my back. This is why I love the heavy deadlift is for the exact it case. It turns on the whole back. It turns it. on the entire back. So if you're somebody who has a hard time feeling your back muscles, but you have good form deadlift, if you could deadlift with good form, that requires that you keep a stable spine through the movement. In order to stabilize a spine and pull 100, 200, 300 plus pounds off the ground, it wakes up every entire muscle in the entire back. So that's why I like that is it wakes it up. You can't help but already start to feel every muscle in your back by doing heavy deadlifts. And then you go over to, you know, an isolation type of exercise like a lap pull down. And that and because the deadlift targets a little bit more the lower back, like the erector spinae, then you go over to the lap pull down. You just get this whole full massive pump that just fills. That used to be that's always been one of my favorite combos. Deadlifts to pull ups. Love that. I've done it for a long time. 